Hello and welcome to Freedom Church Online. My name is Paul and I am one of the leaders of Freedom Church here in the UK, United Kingdom. Each week we try and bring a word of God and how we can apply this to our lives. And here we are and it's the first Sunday of 2023. And we have so much before us in the year ahead. We are so excited. This I feel it always around this time of year. It's a time to take stock. It's a time to look at where the Lord has brought us in the past and looking to where he wants to take us in the future. So we will start by looking at Jesus and what's going on in his life right at those early days. This is the time when Jesus is being dedicated at the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus, possibly about 40 days old, as it's recorded that Mary is with Joseph in this encounter in the temple. And I'm reading from Luke 2, 22 to verses 40. It's titled, Jesus Presented in the Temple. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, that is the mother's purification and the baby's dedication, Joseph, Mary, took him, Jesus, to Jerusalem and presented him to the Lord. As it is written, in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated, set apart to the service of God the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice in keeping what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. As an appropriate for a family of modest means would offer instead of, uh, uh, would offer doves instead of a lamb. This is what Mary and Joseph offered. This is most likely before the Magi came to see them. Now there was uh, a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He carefully observed the divine law. He knew what was written in the Old Testament. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. He had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what is customed of the law required, Simeon took him, Jesus, in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother, Mary and Joseph, marvelled. They were amazed at what was said about him by Simeon. Then Simeon blessed them and said this to Mary, his mother. This child is destined to cause the falling of and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your heart too. He goes on. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Peniel, and the tri he, she was of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after the marriage and then was a widow until she was 84 years of age. She never left the area of the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them 
at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the law, they returned to Galilee and to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. I just love the way Joseph and Mary were amazed and they marveled at what Simeon said about this child. Can you imagine those things being said of your child by this incredibly important person called Simeon? And this was yet another occasion that Mary had been told that her child was the Messiah. An earlier confirmation came through Elizabeth, but this one was in the temple and was something she and Joseph marvelled at. Once again, Mary pondered this in her heart. What Simeon had been promised by God was absolutely miraculous, really. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. He suggests that he would be old when it happened to me. We read that he had been waiting for the consolation of Israel, that the comfort at that time, the Messiah, would bring his people. He had longed that the Messiah would come to the people he loved. So it seems that both Simeon and Anna had waited a long time for this come to pass. And I feel there is a lesson for us in all of this. We are in such a microwave society at the moment. It's, it's, it's all that we want it now. And we want it all. We want to see things now. These two stalwarts, Anna and Simeon, had been waiting close to the temple in Jerusalem for a long time. Simeon knew that the pinnacle of his life's work was to see the Messiah. And he was able to tell Joseph and Mary. This was not something that Simeon had uh, kept to himself. Luke, in his investigation of Jesus Christ, most likely didn't meet Simeon if he was already old and another 20 years on top of that. It was unlikely that he would have met him. And so Luke had met witnesses who knew about Simeon and what he said. And after he'd been released from his word, he went in peace. Then Anna comes up at the same time. The temple would have been, I believe, would have been a very busy place with lots of comings and goings at that time. And we read that Anna, coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and then spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. She told all. She was bold. Did everyone believe her, I wonder? I don't think so. Yet these two people, Simeon and Anna, held on to what God had said to them. They were delighted when what God had been revealed came to pass. That is never easy to hang on to what God has said, especially years down the line, because we live in such a seeing world. We can be distracted by what's happening. We just get waylaid. Something's going on elsewhere and we get sidetracked. And in the waiting, in the can't see it happening moments, we can become disappointed, disillusioned, and even disheartened. 
Faith is such a small word, isn't it? Just five letters. But to hang on to faith is really challenging. It was then and it is now. But Hebrews 11 once describes faith like this. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain, certain of what we do not see. And these two had a faith that was alive and they were waiting expectantly. We certainly don't know much about Simeon, but we can see his heart is alive for God. For him to come to earth, the Messiah to come. Anna, we're told a little bit more about. She'd been married for seven years and had been a widow since then. And now she was 84 years of old age. She lived around the temple, was known as a prophetess and called to fast and pray. Could that mean she had clung on to God's word for her for decades? She had overcome disappointment and loss of her husband and of her dreams of a family life. Being a widow meant she was one of the most vulnerable in society. Yet the Lord brought her through. She seemed so close to him, so alive, so full of joy. But this was the culmination of her ministry also. She too came up at that very moment and began praising and giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to all who were looking for the redemption and the deliverance of Jerusalem. Just look at what the Lord can do through people who ardently pursue him and hold fast to him for many years. Looking back in our walk with Jesus, Way back in 2011, just five of us were invited along to Holy Trinity Brompton's summer camp. Did we know what the Lord was training us for then? No. Did we know how many people's lives would be touched in the next 11 years through these events? No. Did we know what he was calling us out to do. And actually that is for us to hold a summer camp. No. Has it been exciting? Have we marveled at what has taken place? Has it been amazing? Oh, yes, it has. At last year's summer camp, we talked about building with gold, silver and precious stones. And I went on to explain just a little bit, but gold represents representing work that is eternal and meaningful with motivation and love for Jesus Christ. And silver represents redemption. All through the Bible, it leads us to the redeeming work of Jesus Christ for each one of us. Then I love the last part, which is about the precious stones. In the book of Exodus, Aaron had an outfit made with so much meaning. One item he had to wear before he could go into the presence of God was the ephod. The ephod was made up of 12 different precious stones and he would wear these stones surrounding his heart before going into God's presence. The 12 stones represented the 12 tribes of Israel, all the people that God had called. So precious stones represents people. We need to build with precious stones. We need to build with people. We need to keep on offering the opportunities to build into people, build Jesus into them. We need to keep open the door for people to experience Jesus Christ. 
This is the long haul. This is what Simeon and Anna did. Can we just encourage you in this first Sunday of 2023 to keep eyes of faith on what the Lord is doing and will do? You might feel you are quite insignificant. But can I tell you, it's reported that each person has the chance to influence 10,000 people in their lifetime. Wow. During last year, I believe that's what we did. We as a church influenced many people's lives. But it's not just limited to two occasions or just a few important ones. I feel it's what we do as a church, as followers of Jesus Christ, 52 weeks of the year, when we're together, when we are out there. First, I'd just like to mention a couple of them. The first one I'd like to mention is what happened over the Jubilee, the four days. There were four days of extreme hard work. We had to put a marquee up, and I don't think anyone ever used it. But anyway, just by, by all of us giving the way we did. The, the first big event was the stay and play event for children and their parents. Absolutely incredible. So many new people we met there. Then the sports morning on Saturday, we had dads and mums doing all sorts of funny games. Then on the, uh, not only for the Pentecost service in the morning, but following on with a celebration of Her Majesty the Queen with a hall so full of people that there were standing outside to listen in. So many sowed seeds sown. And I know we won't have another platinum jubilee in our lifetimes, but we will have other opportunities. Then there has been the summer camp. It's been building up over the la of those 11 years that we've been doing it. And the last two summers, we've had to do it independently, just ourselves. So this summer coming up will be our 12th summer camp. What, what a culmination last year was. We actually baptised 11 people. And just under half the people that we took away were under 18 years of age. Oh, just so many lives transformed. Was it hard work? Oh, yes, it was. And were those green lights in the cabins? Oh, and the plagues of wasps? Oh, yes. There were little things. But so much fun, so much laughter, so many God experiences were had by all there. Going back to Simeon and Anna, did they know that Luke was going to include their story, their lives in our Bible? I don't think they did. Did they know that over 2000 years later, we'd be reading about what they did and what they said? No, I don't think they did. Did we know that the summer camp 2022 was going to bring about the parenting course? No, we didn't. And it's not just doing the courses or anything like that. The parenting course is over 15 years of age. It's the conversations afterwards. It's us discussing, us talking, finding out what they're doing, etc. As John Wimber famously said, the meat is on the streets. And it's just talking with people about Christ and how he affects our lives and how we can work in him and how he works in our lives as well. In other words, it's the living out of our faith in everyday life consistently through the ups and through the downs, through the disappointments, through the trials, but through the good times. Sharing it all with others, which matures us and encourages them and speaks to them about the goodness of Jesus Christ and how much Father God loves them. As Mother Teresa said, 
I am called to be faithful, not successful. We have parents who have had abusive lives, that had abusive upbringings. They wanted to know, how can I be a good parent? We had others who find it really difficult being a parent. People who are doing it without a partner. And Jesus was there meeting them. His Holy Spirit was at work. Do I know what this year holds? Like Simeon and Anna, we wait with expectation and anticipation of what it will bring about. But as we worship and serve together each Sunday, Christ will work through us. How do we know this? Because he always has in the past. He has been so faithful to us. I would like to think that we are planning for the biggest summer camp 2023 yet. And I know it's not about numbers. And to keep focused on Jesus Christ. And that's what strikes me about Simeon and Anna in this account. It was in the mundane, in the normal, everyday living as follower of Jesus Christ, of looking to Father God, going to the temple consistently and regularly. And they still had to do the washing. I don't know if they did the ironing in those days, but they still had to find the food, buy the food and, and cook it and everything like that. You know, they had to do the ordinary things. And with nothing extraordinary happening. It is here that their faith in what God had said was realised. By their faithfulness, they were positioned to see the promised Messiah. Imagine it. We can only meet him, in, in, but we can't meet him bodily. They actually held Jesus Christ in their hands. Absolutely incredible. He's the saviour of the world and they knew he was. Some in the temple saw the baby but didn't see the Messiah. I hope that's not us. We are all called to be faithful and we're all called to see Jesus Christ. And as we do what we can he will do the miraculous around us. What does 2023 hold? It holds all the Lord's promises for each one of us. Like Simeon and Anna, we fix our eyes on the Lord. And as we come to worship, to learn, to pray, to serve together, he is faithful. He has plans to prosper us and not to harm us. He has plans for his kingdom to come. And it involves each one of us. Oh, amen. But let us be ready. May we just take this opportunity to wish you a year that will draw you closer to Jesus Christ and all that he has for you. God bless. Thank you for listening.